Thanks very much for clicking on the video link. My name is Natalie Armstrong Motan, and today I am joined by friend and colleague in Ireland, Jerry O'Sullivan. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Natalie. Thank you for asking me. Oh, it's my pleasure. So the American Bar Association's Section for Dispute Resolution has created a series of not heavy conversations with resolutionists around the world called Idle Chat. And so, Jerry, what I've done is draft about 120 questions that I've written here on these little cards, and we'll just give them a quick shuffle. Okay, so anything could happen. Anything can happen. It's an anything can happen kind of a chat. Wonderful. All right, here we go. Jerry, are you handy in the kitchen by any chance? I hate cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very handy at washing up uh, and, and if somebody someday invents a pink pill for breakfast and a nice maybe a kind of a bluish turquoise one for lunchtime and a, a nice green mellow one for the evening I will be buying them and selling my fridge. Just, and just have meal replacement. Absolutely It'd give me more time to do lots of other things and not have to think what am I going to cook. I absolutely hate cooking. <laughs> Sorry, so Natalie, to that question, I think <laughs> it's not going to help anybody with anything. Absolutely fair. Absolutely fair. Uh, Jerry, if I said to you, we're having a talent show this evening, what would you be performing in our talent show? I would probably not come. <laughs> <laughs> the, first, the first thing I'd say is I can't sing. <laughs> And I remember being about age six and, and in primary school, national school, and and um, the whole of the, the, the school were out singing in rows. And there was a nun walking from one through each row like this to everybody. And she stopped here to my friend, Mary Cullen, and she said, it would be better if you stopped. And I thought, oh, my goodness, that's the most terrible thing to say to anyone. And then she came to me and she said, it would be better if you stopped too. And I thought, oh, my God. I never opened my mouth again until I had a motorbike when I was about 20. The motorbike in Dublin, I had a broken exhaust and I used to sing around the streets of Dublin. So I would probably tell that story and that would be my party piece. That's an excellent story to tell. I like your storytelling capabilities. Uh, let's see, Jerry. What do you know now that you wish you had known in your 20s? Oh my God, everything, I, 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 everything, um, how the mind works, how people are, what causes conflict, what helps, um, ev everything. Um, and I think I might have made different choices then regarding my career. Um, I have asked myself so many times what would things have been like if I have the knowledge that I have now when I was 20 or in my 20s and each time I just wonder at the, the capacity and the capability of what, what it could have been like which would have been amazing right. however it's really nice to learn these things when you've come to an elder age as well because uh, you get to appreciate the comparison between what it was like when you didn't know those things and what it's like when you now know them. And the difference in, in my life has been uh, so much better quality, I suppose, because of what I've learned along the route. Yeah. yeah. But I would have made many, many different life choices. I, I think that's probably true for a lot of us. But if you weren't a mediator, what would you be? Um, I would be an international war correspondent. I'm very clear about that. Uh, that's Absolutely. an answer. That's 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 what I would be. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I'd have got, you know, stuck right in there. It, it wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have got a job from anyone. I'd have to have been freelance, I think, because I wouldn't have stuck to the rules. Um, I'd have. Um, just got in there deep and dirty with whatever was going on and talking to people who were the decision makers and, and even more importantly, talking to people who had been impacted by, by, um, by whatever conflict it was that was happening at that time. And I spent a lot of time volunteering in Palestine. And I think that has really, 
and then join advocacy work afterwards. I would have written articles about what I'd seen and experienced while I was on the ground, and I made a, a documentary on the um, arrests and abuses of Palestinian children. And and I, I wondered about all of that, and I thought, well, you know, making this documentary, I thought, I'm not a filmmaker. I only know how to turn a camera on and off for for the assessments for mediators, you know, when they're looking for their certification. But I realized it was very similar to the work that I was doing previously, which was facilitating groups and writing reports and doing evaluations of projects and, and making that film. Uh, the mode was different, but all of the thinking behind who do you want to ask a question of and for what reason, what do you want to get from it? All of that fitted into what I did before. So um, I suppose I've I won't say I've had experience as a war ex correspondent as such, but I've certainly had experience of being in, in difficult, intense situations and writing about them. So long answer to a, what I originally gave as a very short question, I'd be a war correspondent, yeah. No, that's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Um, next question, um, what would you consider to be fine or okay in small numbers, but terrifying in large numbers? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Not a lot of things terrify me. Um, except uh, getting injured if I'm windsurfing. That really does terrify me. But more, not it's not that that terrifies me. It's the outcome was, damn it, I can't, you know, right. walk or do something like that. Um, Quick to my mind comes, you know, snakes. Yeah. Yeah, one, one snake nothing. is... Hmm. Yeah, but too many. I, I don't think I'd even like one snake, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was somebody... Now, this is a different answer to your question, to what maybe ha would have been a different question. But somebody asked me once, do I prefer the company of men or women? And I said, I like the company of um, women on a one-to-one -one basis. I really do enjoy chatting with a woman on a one-to-one -one basis. And I like the company of men in, in larger groups. Uh, neither, neither, I'm not saying that being in a larger group of women scares me or being with just one man scares me, but it's kind of the kind of thing that came to my mind when you asked the question. Yeah. Very interesting. All right. Very interesting. Um, Jerry, what sport could you play the longest in a televised game without anyone discovering that you're not a professional athlete? Are you, I'm not too sure of the question. Are you asking what is it, what sport I would be good enough so that nobody would think I wasn't professional? Yeah, what, what sport um, could you play and, and not be called out for, for being a, not a professional athlete? Um, I'm not sure because I keep getting injured. <laughs> I played a huge amount of tennis for years and years and I absolutely, I, I just loved it. Um, I wasn't terrific. I just loved the speed of it. Um, and then I moved on to surfing and then windsurfing and it's injury keeps stopping me. I actually don't know how to answer that question, Natalie. I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Jerry, what always cheers you up? Oh, chatting. <laughs> ch ch chatting. Uh, and I'd add a bit more is, is I've discovered what absolutely gives me joy is, is my little grandson. And I have another grandson coming. He's due tomorrow. Um, I don't know to, with with my other son who uh, is in Ireland, or based in Ireland. But um, yeah, chatting. I love a good conversation. I absolutely love a good conversation, Natalie. I could talk all night long, and hence I have what the, my my um, consultant told me was a, a repetitive strain injury in my throat. <laughs> I said what, and I said how do I cure that? And he said stop talking. And I said everyone I know is going to roar laughing when. When they hear that um, prescription for a cure, because it's never going to happen. But yeah, I just love chatting. I love getting to know people. I love to know what makes them tick. I love, I love, I'm just really, really interested in people and I love a good chat. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your next grandson. That's going to be yes. fantastic because I, I know how much you love babies. All right. Uh, oh, burning question coffee or tea? Neither. I have the weirdest drink ever. It's um, what I call, well, it's got many names that people have christened it over the years, like silver tea and tea with no tea. 
So it's actually the same as a cup of tea with a drop of milk without the tea bag. Silver Weird. tea, I've never heard of that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> if it makes you happy, I think that's fantastic. Jerry, do you have a good luck charm? Mm, no. I've never thought no, of that. No. No? Okay. That's a lovely question. Uh, do you happen to know what is the last photograph that you took on your phone? Off the top of my head. Um, I know it was a thing, not a person. <laughs> Can I check? <laughs> I know. Um, I know. Uh, I had my phone upgraded yesterday and I'm... Um, Oh, actually, yes, it was something I saw on LinkedIn and it was uh, on Twitter. The question asked was, is it acceptable to use the expression reach out in the workplace? You know that question I, I, or the, when you say the phrase, I, I decided I would reach out to her. Okay, so I, and then it had, there's a whole map of, um, so are you a member of the Four Tops? Do you remember the Four Tops used to sing that? song you know, reach out and I'll be there and then depending whether you get any yes or no in the graphic there are other kind of little boxes of things which are extremely funny and I took that photograph so I thought that's class I really like it yeah all right all right that's a good one uh Jerry is there any word that you regularly misspell that I misspell um mediation <laughs> Every time I, I'm, I like, I like mediate rather. Every time I'm typing, there's a, it's, it's meditate. So I've actually put, um, you know, you've got your spell. Your, I don't know what it's called. It's not called a spell check, but it's, it's. A, you can put in a word that, you know, if you write these letters, then this long thing comes up or whatever. So I put, I, I put that into my, into that place in my computer. I put in, um, if I ever write mediate, put it. If I ever write um, meditate, put in mediate. It's quite ridiculous, yeah. <laughs> Shortcuts are sometimes really necessary. Yeah. And Terry, I'll ask you the same question that I ask everyone at the last question. What do you love most about the resolution industry? Oh, just the incredible uh, change at the end. Um, not every time does, every, does each party give the other a hug. In fact, I'd probably say only maybe 15 or 20% of the time, but, but th that, that, or that realization that in someone's face when they realize oh my god I got it all wrong or, or I didn't have enough information or now I can see also oh, that's why you did what you did it, it, it's when a paradigm shift has occurred either in stages along the way or at the very end and um, and then to see that change and to think that it was affected by merely asking uh, a few questions um, yeah, which is what probably brought me to write a book on mediation questions because I could I could began to see the huge impact of asking specific questions that would create a paradigm shift in how people think. That's what I love about mediation when I see that experience, that moment. And I have cried at the end of mediations. I have cried with the parties. I, I, I when I say I haven't, I, when I say I've cried with them, what I mean is there would be a few tears, you know, escaping down one side of my face. Um, if I saw that they were being really emotional themselves about where they had come to after their discussions. Yeah. Uh, that, that is something to be very proud of. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for joining me in an idle chat for the American Bar Association section for dispute resolution. It was great getting to know you a little bit thank better. You. Thank you, Natalie.